Um, this is a bit of a hybrid presentation, uh, jointly proposed by ourselves and GAN Systems. Um, we've been talking about um, uh, different techniques and, and, and so on for getting rid of uh, water. So uh, it might sound a bit bizarre, but I'm going to talk about a 40 watt heater. But I'll come back to that in a few minutes. Um, so we're collaborating with GAN Systems. Um, they are the leader in um, uh, uh, gallium nitride chips. A lot of conversation at the moment in automotive about the take-up of silicon carbide. Well, if you listen to GAN Systems, they'll say that actually gallium nitride is the holy grail of, um, uh, of, of power switching. Um, but we also know that using gallium nitride is a little bit challenging in terms of the technology and how you actually drive it. And as a, a more of a commercial guy than a technical guy, and you'll realize that the more I talk, um, I was aligned using gallium nitride, a little bit like trying to put a drag car rocket engine in a Fiat Uno. And as soon as you touch the accelerator with that rocket engine, the Fiat Uno's on its back. We've come up by collaborating with gall gallium nitride systems, GAN systems, at QPT, we've come up with a technique by which, instead of driving with that right foot tickling the accelerator and the left foot hard on the brake to stop all the consequences of really fast switching, we've got to come up with a technique where you can drive it as if it's a Tesla. And if any of you has ever tried driving a Tesla, if you floor it, it's absolutely scary. You feel like you're in that DeLorean that's about to take off. So, Gallium nit G GAN Systems is the leader in gallium nitride. Um, they've got products for all sorts of different applications in automotive, uh, electric vehicle, uh, vehicle uh, electrification, compressors, um, ADAS solutions. And I'm going to talk about some of the particular applications. Um, they have uh, an investment from a number of interesting uh, uh, companies, uh, BMW Ventures, uh, Delta and Vitesco. And that makes them a very interesting partner for ourselves at Quantum Power Transformation. We're a little bit less well established, been going for about three years now. And uh, literally yesterday, uh, we closed a new funding round and that gets us to the next stage, allows us to start making this 40 watt heater in, in volume. Did I call it a 40 watt heater again? I promised Rob I wouldn't describe it as a 40 watt heater, but I'll come back to that. Quantum power in automotive, faster switching, better efficiency, Less cooling, less weight, equals greater range, and EMC qualified. So the secret of this, which has two 650 volt GAN transistors, this will switch not at one or 200 kilohertz like you'd find in a usual power electronics design, this will switch at megahertz. At which point the power design is going, whoa, hang on a minute, but this is actually not a power electronics design, it's a radio frequency design. This is a radio module. So all the high switching, high speed switching goes on inside this module, inside a Faraday cage, so the EMC is actually, manu is actually managed within this module. And we've been collaborating now with GAN Systems for the most part of this year, and we'll move forward next year to start bringing out some products together. There are all sorts of different applications um, for, for gallium nitride in automotive, and I'm going to talk about some of the particular ones today um, in collaboration with GAN. So, GAN, HEMT, HEMT transistors, they enable hard switching without the penalty of power losses. The problem that you get is the massive EMC radiation. How do you actually manage that? How do you solve that problem? A traditional bus bar connectivity system just couldn't switch that fast. It, it would just choke on it. It just couldn't take that sort of current and switching speed. Switching at one nanosecond needs a completely different topology. And that's where quantum power transformation comes in. That's where experience, not of particularly power electronics, but radar engineering, RF engineering, mechanical engineering. Rob, who's the founder, he started his career at 16 in his dad's machine workshop. So he actually made this module, this beautiful little aluminium thing. And um, uh, we have actually got a, a technique by which you can manage those EMC issues within the module. This takes DC in and gives out pure sine wave. And that is the secret to making the difference in terms of efficiency. So faster switching reduces the losses. It shrinks the passive component size. So all the filtering, where usually you would have a, an expensive external fil filter to your power module, all the fil filtering is inside here. It's miniaturized, and it's really low cost, and it's really small. And that reduces the whole system size, the whole system weight. 
future. This one, this actually has two GAN trip chips in it, two 650 volt GAN chips, and then a discrete um, A to D system, sensing system, all that analog circuitry is using discrete standard components, which hopefully we can actually buy. I think Rob's working on some of those, but um, it has a discrete version of this. So this is just slightly, so it's about the size of a, 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 an old matchbox, for those of you who remember matchboxes. Um, and the next version of it will have an ASIC integration. This version works at up to a few megahertz, one to three megahertz. The eventual ASIC integrated version will go at 20 megahertz plus, which is something that you don't usually find in power electronics. So this solves the traditional drive issues of efficiency, filtering, EMI, and size. So the sort of applications that we're looking at, for us to get into the, um, the actual powertrain of an EV vehicle, that's a bit, bit of a further way down the road. We'll need the next generation or two of this before we can at attack that. But we can start by looking at HVAC systems. And actually, as an early stage company, you need to start talking early with the automotive industry because the design cycles are long. Our initial target market is HVAC systems, heat, heat pumps for domestic application. So this actually, I call it a 40 watt heater, it's an eight kilowatt half bridge. So three of these with a DSP processor driving it, you've got a 24 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt motor drive. And we're working with people who are making domestic uh, HVAC systems, heat pumps, because we think we can improve the efficiency of their systems. The, the VFD guys, they talk about very high efficiency, 96, 98, 99%, but that's actually specified at full operating load. And we all know that motors are not usually going at full operating load, they're going at half load or quarter load. And that's where there's quite a gap of efficiency, but this will allow you to cover that gap and improve the efficiency. So whilst it's eight kilowatts switching, it only wastes 40 watts. It's only 99.5% it's efficient. So for systems like e, uh, uh, HVAC systems in general, but also HVAC for um, uh, 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 in, in EV vehicles, we all know that if you've got an EV and you start switching on your aircon or your, your heater, your range drops. Well, actually, that's always happened in your internal combustion car but it's sort of free because it's one or two miles per gallon and we all just leave the aircon on most of the time anyway, whether it's heating or cooling. Uh, once you do that in an EV car, it's no longer free. And at the edges of ambient temperature, you've got all sorts of issues like you've got to warm the battery up before you can start the car. At low temperature, at high temperature, the efficiency, and according to e-mobility engineering, can be reduced by nearly a third. We think we can help solve that problem. And, um, with QPT and GAN, we think we can do this with much greater efficiency. Another area, and this is potentially a potentially interesting one, is for e-turbo in internal combustion engine systems. Here, again, we have the potential to uh, uh, improve the emissions. The Euro 7 standard coming along is going to demand even more stringent conditions. I'm thinking, well, I've just got rid of my 16-year-old Volvo and got a seven-year-old Volvo, how long before I'm told to take that off the road? Well, then I think, well, I've already made the carbon footprint of having that Volvo, so should I just keep driving it as long as it'll go? I don't know, I haven't done that equation. But basically, this can run at very high frequency to manage that high-speed drive at over 200,000 RPM, greater, denser, uh, greater, dense, uh, greater density and higher efficiency solutions or more pressure for the same, for the same uh, volume of air put through. We can actually make a difference in those e-turbo systems. Fuel cell compressors, it's a similar equation there. So if you've got a hydrogen fuel cell, again, driving that ox oxygen at very high speed from the atmosphere to the fuel cell, faster switching, reduces system size and weight for the same air supply. And then this is a longer term one. I think it'll be a couple of generations down the road when we'll have a solution for the powertrain. But the pure sine wave is what gives it the real, uh, the real boost in, 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 in performance and impacts the motor lifetime. Silicon and silicon carbide transistor designs are using multi-level inverters to achieve lower harmonics. This design, because it's pure sine wave, it just eliminates those harmonic losses altogether. It'll, it'll avoid winding breakdown, bearing damage, and excess eddy currents, and it'll have a significant impact on the MTBF of the motor. And the sine wave just gives you that improvement in motor efficiency and cost. First generation, the first product we have is QGAN drive. 
this is it. Um, we're busy building that. We'll start to actually deliver real uh, data from it. The simulations show that we can actually achieve significant efficiency improvements across the range. Reduces losses by up to 80%, and it's across the range of operating, operating loads as opposed to simply at the very high end. And this is a fully EMC qualified turnkey design. So the usual issues that have a high speed switching are taken out with this, uh, with this approach. Generations, this is the first generation. Uh, this device will be starting to uh, sample during the balance of this year. The next generation will start to do some ASICs. Um, we haven't announced it yet, but some of you might have heard of um, Silicon Catalyst, which is an incubator in California. Um, since set up in the UK in the last year by Sean Redmond. And basically, Silicon Catalyst, if you get onto their incubator program, you get free access to EDA tools, free access to tape outs in the factory, free IP from people like Arm. It's like a sweetie shop for design engineers. After six months of going through all the different stages of qualification, a month ago we signed up into the incubator program with Silicon Catalyst, and we'll be announcing that next month. That's going to be great for when we get to the second generation because we'll have ASIC integration in here, which will make it much smaller. It'll improve the cost. It'll improve the, uh, 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 the overall performance. And then the final generation has a... F so the first two generations have PWM com backwards compatibility. The final generation will have a digital, uh, full digital control loop switching and run at 20 megahertz or more. Just a little bit for GAN systems. This is the product range they have for all sorts of different applications. Uh, they would have been here, but we were relatively late to get on the agenda, so it was tricky for them to come over. Apologize for that, because you've got a lot more out of it if the technologists have been presenting this. But um, uh, we think that between ourselves and GAN systems, um, we've got something that can actually change the nature of efficiency for motor drives. Thank you very much.